by David Hay here in Manchester. Just one day out from Joe Joyce versus Joseph Parker. The excitement really is building, isn't it? It's nice. Everybody here is really buzzing. Um, I, I saw both Parker and Joyce earlier. Both looked in tip-top shape on the scales. Both coming super heavy. So I got a feeling that we, we, we're going to have some bombs to throw. And I think both fighters have had plenty of notice. They've, uh, there's no word around the campfire about injuries. Everyone, I think, I think we're going to get ourselves the fight we're all expecting. And with the implications this could have on the heavyweight division leading into 2023, there's a huge amount on the line for both of these, isn't there? Yeah, you know, Joe Joyce has just turned you know, 37 and you know, he's got to get a move on. You know, he's in a position now where but this win puts him in position for the WBO heavyweight championship. You know, he, he's next for that, uh, that title. So there's, everything's on the line. I talked to Ismail Salas, his coach, and he said, no, you know Joe. You see, Joe's, Joe's Joe. He's in shape. He's coming. He's letting them hands go. And um, he's confident. He said he's been getting some good sparring. You know, he had Carlos Takam in camp. He was a, good, he was a very good, uh, uh, well-seasoned uh, heavyweight contender. And he's been getting some good rounds. He did 12 rounds like three times, which is which is rare to get someone good enough to ma maintain the 12 rounds. But, you know, I've used Carlos Takam in the past for sparring before I fought Derek Chisora 10 years ago. And, you know, he was, I remember how much hard work he was. He's a real, he's a real handful. So he, I definitely got some good rounds out of him. And apparently um, Joyce has also. So that's really given him good confidence coming into this fight against Parker. You mentioned Joe's age, obviously 37 years old now. At what point do you think that becomes a bit of a factor going into we'll fight? We'll find out tomorrow night. We'll find out tomorrow night, you know, you know when he turned pro, you know, he's like 30, 30, 31. When he turned professional, you know, that's, uh, that's quite old. He's quite old to turn pro and, you know, he's been taking some shots. You know, it's not so much what happens in the ring when the cameras are rolling. So what happens outside of the ring, behind closed doors? How many shots you take in there? Now, I'm watching some video footage of Anthony Joshua sparring um, Joyce. Just I think it's popped up on my on, on YouTube, and he was getting his head rattled. Then I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's it's just get that, let's get that head moving. So it's hopefully, hopefully he's not going to want to eat everything that comes his way. Someone said he likes the taste of leather. He likes, he likes, he likes, he likes the taste of it. Feed him. Yeah, so it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be interesting. It really is. Um, but Parker seems confident. Parker seems he's got quite a kind of confidence about him. It's like he really, he's done his homework. You know, Joyce has been down to the, the Fury, Furies and sparred with Fury, Fury and Tyson. So they all know him very well. They've probably got video footage of him sparring. And one thing Joyce hasn't really changed is his style. He has the same style now as he has at the Olympics. You know, we, you know, he hasn't really adapted or changed the pro game. Very rigid, very rigid. His hand position is very similar. His punch, his punch angles, kind of, kind of the same. So the fact that they've got footage, video footage of him sparring, they can rehearse it. They can see what he does when he does it. You know, could work into um, Parker's favour in terms of strategy. You know, he's got Andy Lee, who's a sort of genius uh, coach. And um, a teacher, he really understands the, the sweet science. You know, come from a great um, line of uh, sort of Kronk, uh, Manuel Stewart, uh, tutored fighters who come through that whole system. And um, I definitely feel you know Parker's improving. You know, if you watch his first fight against uh, Chisora to his second fight, he seemed to improve. He seemed, although the scorecards didn't really reflect that. He was able to deck uh, Chisora a couple of times, able to, you know, well establish himself and hurt uh, um, Chisora significantly more than he did in the first fight. So he's improving, and you can see he's improving as a coach as Parker seems to be improving as well. I saw an interview with uh, Parker who said his career was going down, now he's coming back up, and I agree. You know, he's in some real, he's been in some real, real good fights, and I definitely, definitely think it's, uh, it's, uh, exciting, it's an exciting time for the heavyweight division. And an exciting time for everybody watching on BT Sports Box Office. It's going to be very, very, very exciting. Do not miss it. I've seen how many shots that Joe Joyce has taken over the past 10 fights, even yeah. even maybe. Do you think Parker has the power to, to knock him out? And what would your prediction be? Yeah, he's got the power. Yeah, Parker's got the power to knock anybody out. But you don't have to knock out uh, 
Joyce. You don't, people think it's, it's impossible to knock him out. It's like saying, OK, same thing with Tyson Fury. It's very difficult to knock him out for 10 seconds. Came real close one time, about eight seconds he was down when he woke up and got back to his feet. So um, I think he's a, a similar way. Maybe, maybe it doesn't take a puncher to knock him out. Maybe it takes someone who's got power enough to stun him enough. We've got to stun once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, the referee jumps in and stops the fight. So you don't have to knock someone unconscious to beat him by knockout. You can stop him on his feet. So I think that's, that, that's a very likely uh, potential for, for Parker is he stops Joyce on his feet because Joyce has got this thing about, I don't go down, I've got a great chin. Let's hope when he does get hit and buzz, maybe for the first time, he doesn't think, oh, I can take it, I want to show you I can keep taking it and then take two, three, four, the referee goes, that's enough, son. To stop this, that could happen, or those shots could just bounce off him. And he just keeps walking forward like the Terminator and just smothers Parker. I can see that happen as well. I don't know which way it's going to go at all. It's hard to, I can't really make a prediction on who's going to win that fight, but I, I know it's going to be exciting. I know that. Final one before I let you go Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury, edging closer, or is it? Do you think we see no, it? I, and think, I, think it's getting, I think it's getting closer. I think the fight is the fight everybody wants, it's the fight. Um, Fury wants is to fight, AJ wants is to fight, the fans want, everybody wants it, everybody wants it, people say they don't want it, but they'll be there tuning in, they'll be paying their silly price tickets for it, they'll be paying the highest ever box office price for any British fight, they'll be paying, it. everyone will pay for it because it's the biggest possible event imaginable, and um, I hope they both sign for the fight, I like the, I like the way it's been presented, 60-40, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Fans happy, and hopefully it's an entertaining fight, so they can do it two more times, so they can have a trilogy. That, how cool would that be? If they had, if they, if they, uh, if they were very, very entertaining fights, and the fans got three amazing, epic battles with two great heavyweights from Britain. I'd love that personally. Hopefully the fans will too. So we thank you very much for your time, David.